Hi friends, today we're going to talk about Sun Soul Monks, their inclusion, their space, their history in D&D 5e and Forgotten Legends, plus their space inside Baldur's Gate 3, and the synergy their skills have with the current weapons and items we have. Today's topic was voted on and picked by our Discord members. If you wanted to jump in our Discord, see what's coming up next, play D&D with us, where you test out beta content every week, there's a link in the description, but let's get into the content. So, monks of the Order of the Sun Soul believe that trapped inside them is a small fragment of the sun's essence. Well, really, the sun's divine essence, something that's no longer present inside the realms. Monks of this order are trained to tap into that inner light, which is a technique that was given to them by a deity called Amunadr, who was the deity of the sun before Lathander. There's a bunch of history with Amunadr. A lot of people believe that Lathander is him, kind of reincarnated, but they are specifically two different beings. Amunadr disappeared after the spell plague, and then Lathander came into it afterwards, a lot like Misra. Gods don't tend to just die and go away. They kind of tend to just continue on in a different form. So anyway, monks of this order can manifest that spiritual light physically and use it to do specific things mostly hitting people with it and hurting them a lot these holy monks get the ability to kameha and haruken in the name of the lord but now that we're far far ahead of the spell plague these monks now are very dedicated and loyal to lathander soon and Solun. lathander being the current god of sun Solun being the current god of the moon and soon being the god of beauty just thrown in there for fun i guess they are very staunchly for good and law against bad and dark. They work with churches mostly to collaborate and then go on pilgrims, so to speak, to banish things that have been corrupted by darkness, evil tyranny, or beings that come from the Shadowfell, or just to fuck with Shar. They don't like Shar at all. The whole Sun Soul Order is mostly monks with that tradition, but there are some paladins. Either way, both of them are incredibly, incredibly goody two-shoed. They stay away from anything that could be self-indulgence. They're very strict to the very strict to humility and pretty anti-fun. That's a cut and dry. If you're making a character and you want him to have a gambling problem, just fucking do it. But cut and dry, when you think of a monk monk, like a really monk monk, lives in a temple, ascends from sex, vow of silence shit, hella monk stuff, Sun Soul Orders tend to be more of that direction. You know, they're not as rock and roll as like a Kenzie monk would be, but they are able to manifest light from their body into a searing radiant blast that becomes kind of a missile. So that's pretty dope. Their order maintains three codes or such. They're called the Precipits of Incandescence. And these are a lot like a Paladin Oath. These are the three virtues that they stand for. And each one is more prevalent based on what god that order follows. There is Seek Physical Perfection. To open the way for the Sun Soul to manifest, one should strive to make their body beautiful fitness, cleanliness, and a well-horned physicality create a cleaner window through which the light can shine. This one is emphasized by the followers of Soon. Seek spiritual virtue. Recognize the light in others, not just the darkness. Grant and take each new chance to be virtuous. This is your Lathander boys. Shine light into darkness. Share the sun's light with the world. Light up dark spaces with your presence and banish shadow. This is your guys from Saloon. There isn't really any famous Sun Soul monks, but there is one. In the early Baldur's Gate games, you're able to get so many different companions, and one of them was Rasad, the Sun Soul monk. As a child, a child. No. He was a street urchin, begging and stealing for money until he ran into a monk who decided to take him in and bring him to their monastery, where he was able to grow up with a family and a home, and then adapted the Sun Soul virtues. He's known to butt heads with Victoria who becomes the Dark Mother of Shadowheart's Coven. Both their quests intertwine. There is a possibility where you could be nice to both and keep them both, but doing something good for Rashad will effectively make Shar's followers upset. He's also known for awesome quotes like, pray for your sins and taste my foot. When I made a Sun Soul at least, I thought it would be fun to make them a drow. Besides the contrast being nice and kind of comical, Drow also have the ability to cast darkness and fairy fire inheritedly. 
Fairy Fire can give you the advantage to, well, hit. You're gonna get a bunch of hits, especially with Furry of Blows, so having advantage and making sure they actually land is pretty sick. Plus, darkness blinding people is always gonna be fun. And if you're going for a min-max kind of build, you should check out Bugbears. Bugbears actually have an ability to do 2d6 additional damage per strike, as long as they act before the person they're actually hitting. And because a Sun Soul has the ability to do ranged attacks, this is a way, way easier thing to achieve. All you have to do is Hiduken them from the bushes before the battle even starts. As far as stats go, you don't really want to worry about anything new. Just focus on your major wisdom and dexterity stats like a normal monk would. If you're playing Baldur's Gate 3, you might want to invest something into strength, but that's for later. The first two levels for monk gives you quite a bit, which makes them really good choices for multi-classing. They're quite front-loaded, so to speak. You get the ability to do flurry of blows, your ability to do martial arts gives you an additional attack with bonus action. You also get to be able to use your dexterity for certain weapons. You get to be able to add your wisdom modifier to your AC. But a Sun Soul Monk won't be able to find the light within themselves until they're level 3, unlocking what's called a Radiant Sun Bolt. Now this Sun Bolt is basically an extension of your fist, but it is now a ranged spell attack instead of an unarmed attack. It has a range of 30, you're proficient into it, it uses the same modifier dice that you use for your offed hands. The best part about it though is the damage that comes from it is radiant, which is really hard to get decent radiant damage this early. And you're able to do a flurry of blows with it, spending the same amount of key points, so you can shoot out twice with your bonus action still. Now there's a lot of controversy online about the effectiveness of the Sun Soul Bolt, as it is a ranged spell attack meaning that a lot of additional like ranged feats and abilities don't really stack with it. Uh, for example, Sharpshooter. If the Radiant Sun Bolt truly was an extension of your fist, then it would be a ranged weapon attack. Therefore, you'd be able to use Sharpshooter feat to add 10 points to that damage. Rules as written, you can't even really use Spell Sniper to augment it, as it says that you have to be casting a spell, and this is a magical ranged attack that isn't casted. Which is a good point if you wanted to fight in a silence situation. Silence your area so spellcasters can't do anything about it, but you get to keep juggling your Paylor balls all around the place. When I played a Sun Soul Monk, I took Magic Initiate Warlock to pick up Hex. Sure, Charisma isn't the spell modifier that I am maining here, but it's not gonna really come up. They're not gonna make a save, so fuck it. Now you're raining down radiant and necrotic damage in just massive droves. Hex is a great pick for really any monk, but especially one where you're ranged, so you don't have to worry too much about keeping concentration. Our next ability comes at level 6 with Searing Arc Strike. Now this is basically a remodeled, flavored, bonus action, non-casting burning hands. As soon as you're able to make an attack with your action, you can spend two key points to cast Burning Hands as a bonus action. You're also able to up the level casted of the spell by dumping additional key points into it. What's really cool about this is just like all the other magical damage we're doing, this is not a spell. So things that would stop you from casting are no longer an issue. A Barbarian's Rage can throw Sun Bolts and bust out bonus action Burning Hands. Vocal material somatic components don't matter. And key points come back on short rest, so you really don't have to worry about saving any. Now our next ability comes at 11 with Searing Sunburst. Now this is an augmented fireball that you can do without any kind of really big repercussion besides, you know, a 20 foot square radius that's going to take a ton of radiant damage. You can shoot this out with your action with a 150 feet range insane. Now you don't have to spend any key points to shoot it, but they will only take 2d6. You can dump a key point into it to increase that by 2 more d6. They do cap you at 8d6, which is a fireball's damage. Sun Soul Monks can fireball as an action, and that's pretty rad. The only really big downside is that the save for this is constitution instead of dexterity like fireball usually is, and that is a save most monsters are pretty great at. But at this level, there is no excuse why a Sun Soul Monk can't clear away large groups of mobs. Just absolutely easy. Putting one of these guys in a Strahd campaign would just be unfair to the DM. 
And finally at 17th level, you're able to create what's called a sun shield. You shine very brightly. You're able to turn it on and off as a bonus action whenever you want. And anytime someone hits you with a melee attack, you can use your reaction to do non-savable radiant damage to them, equaling 5 plus your wisdom modifier. A constant no-save damage reaction counter ability is pretty sick. As far as multi-classing goes, I have three pretty solid ones that I like Sun Soul to match with, but they kind of are just great multi-classes with any monk. And the best one that fits thematically, I'd say, is Light Domain Cleric. Level 1, they get the ability to do a warding flare, imposing disadvantage on any melee attack that goes at them with the reaction. And straight up coupling this with patient defense, just make sure you do not get hit. At all. They're also able to do their channel divinity at level 2, Radiance of the Dawn, which is a really big, massive AoE radiant damage hit. That's 2d10 plus the cleric level. And in Baldur's Gate, it is plus your character level, so it is a little more effective there. And this is everything 30 feet around you, so the AoE is huge, and it dispels magical darkness that's in there, so it could really save your ass. Being able to put our wisdom modifier into our AC really creates a great, great multi-class for either one. A monk multi-classing with cleric, or the opposite, as clerics use wisdom for all their spells. Besides having things like healing word or inflict wounds, hold person are all going to make your monk way, way, way stronger. The Cleric of Light's domain spells are also radiant and fire based, so thematically, it also just stacks really well. Hell, Light Clerics actually get real fireballed, so you can stack those up together really nicely. Use your main action to cast Searing Ray to shoot out three bolts that do 2d6 and use your bonus action to do a flurry of blows with your Radiant Bolts. God help them if you cast Hex on them prior. Another fun class to put into a Sunsoul Monk would be Rogue. And of all the picks of Rogue, you'd probably think that the Inquisitor would be the best choice as they both really heavily rely on their Wisdom score, but... I like to use Phantom instead. Let's face it, your multi-class dip isn't going to get higher most likely than, what, 4th, 5th level? So the monk's big abilities for their subclass come at level 3 and 9. With Whales of the Grave, you're able to do additional necrotic damage based on you doing a sneak attack. You'll have to be using a finesse weapon as your main weapon, but the additional damage will stack up and spread out. But to do that, you'll have to do more melee style fighting, which will let you take advantage of monk abilities like Stunning Strike. Swing your finesse weapon, hit him with the sneak attack, pop someone around you with the necrotic whales of the grave, then use your bonus action to do a shearing arc strike to burning hands everybody in the area. Not to mention you get additional proficiencies and expertise for living up road. It's a pretty good fit. A last subclass is a little weird. It takes advantage of some of the faults that the Radiant Bolt kind of has and that would be taking up Ranger. Picking up the bow and sharpshooter feet will let you do huge spike damage with your main action and then you can follow up with your bonus action to send two radiant bolts out behind you. I like to pick up the Beastmaster feet. At least in Baldur's Gate, you're able to summon a bird familiar to blind targets, giving you advantage to hit them with both your sharpshooter shot and your bolts. In base 5e, you could have your creature of the land attack and keep enemies back, so you can make sure that you keep your distance and have your clear shots. But of course there's Gloomstalker, and Gloomstalker is the best ranger, so I wouldn't feel bad if anyone decided to forget all of that and just pick that up. By the way, ranger spells are wisdom spells, so you're able to keep that same DC pretty high. Unfortunately, Hunter's Mark won't work with your Radiant Bolts. They're not a weapon attack. They are a ranged spell attack, so that sucks. But Zephyr Strike, Speak with Animals, there's tons of good Ranger spells that you can take advantage of just fine. Spike Growth is also one of the best ones they get. In Baldur's Gate 3, the equipment that they have and the new status effects that they included really, really shine when it comes to a Sun Soul Monk, especially with the inclusion of Radiant Orb. A status effect when placed on an enemy lowers their attack rolls by one for every stack that you have. There are a lot of items that place this status effect on enemies, but most of them, which is all but one, involve you doing Radiant Damage. So thankfully, you can do Radiant Damage literally out your ass. If you equip the Luminous Gloves that you can find in Act 2, you will turn every single one of your Radiant Orbs into a debuff blast. 
every strike you hit with these is going to lower all of their attack rolls, making bosses a lot easier to handle. But it's so hard to pick gloves for Baldur's Gate 3, but especially for a monk, because there's so many that do so, so many things for them. Like the Gloves of the Belligerent Skies that you can find in the Kresh, turning each one of your orbs into a reverb blast, lowering all their strength decks and con scores, and eventually doing thunder damage and knocking them on their butts. These Radiant Bolts are ranged spell attacks, but they're still unarmed attacks, so gloves like the Flawed Heldux gloves are still going to do additional elemental damage and cause bleeding. I like to use the Luminous gloves and pair them with the Cold Brim hat that you can find in Balthazar's room at the top of Moonrise Towers. That way, you're adding Radiant Bolt and Encrusted with Frost at the same time. Adding the Callous Glow Ring that you can find in Shard's Gauntlet right next to Balthazar's laboratory will add additional radiant damage to everything you hit. It's not a big deal, but, you know, additional damage on theme, I dug it. And last but not really least is the one trick that everybody and their mom does to make a monk overpowered as hell in Baldur's Gate 3, and that is using the Tavern Brawler trick to add your strength modifier twice to all of your unhand attacks, usually done by taking a strength potion or using a weapon that increases your max strength without having to waste your ability scores on strength. Things like the Club of Hill Giant Strength or the Handmaiden's Mace, which you can find at the end of Shadow Hearts storyline. Definitely the best option. It makes your strength 18, does additional d6 poison damage, is a monk weapon. Just make sure you're using the Boots of Unhibited Kushigo to add your wisdom modifier to all of these bolts and you're set. Totally good to go. Hey, I hope you like my video. We've been voting on what my next video's topics will be in our Discord if you wanted to check that out. Links in the description. Also, I am running a live weekly D&D session to test out new beta content for 5e with players that are viewers of the channel. All you have to do is join the Discord, follow the instructions. It's as easy as putting a comment in a channel to apply to play with us. There's new players every week, so there's plenty of spaces for you. We're going to be playing live on YouTube this Thursday, so definitely come check us out. I'd like to thank all of my sponsors, but especially these guys right here. Anyone in the adventure or higher category on the memberships gets to be put into the ending credits, and they also get put into a raffle that pulls every Sunday. Last week, I raffled off one of my favorite sweatshirts, and I'm going to do it again. This Sunday, we're giving away our dice hoodie if you wanted to buy one your own. They're available at rollforbooty.com, but I've been giving away like crazy, so just an option. Anyway, goodbye, I love you.